Seven Armed Standoffs in U.S. History Number 7. John Joe Gray The longest armed standoff in U.S. history ended in 2014 simply due to lack of interest. Joe John Gray from the town of Trinidad near Dallas, Texas, was arrested in 1999 after being pulled over for speeding. Upon approaching the car, officers saw high-powered rifles and anti-government materials, but Gray refused to get out. Instead, when troopers tried to remove him from the car, he bit one of their hands and went for his gun. Gray was taken into custody and immediately posted bond. He refused to have his day in court and instead hid on 47-acre property for 16 years with his family, where he vowed to shoot any member of law enforcement who tried to make him leave. The years rolled on and the district attorney dropped the charges in December of 2014. However, for reasons unknown, no one ever bothered to tell the county sheriff or even the Gray family. Another year would pass before, and for the first time this century, Joe Gray was once again a free man. Number 6. Ammon Bundy as of this writing, the events surrounding the standoff at Oregon's Malheur National Wildlife Refuge are still being played out. Since January 2, 2016, a small armed group of men led by Cliven Bundy's son Ammon have occupied the wildlife refuge to protest federal land use policies. The group, calling itself Citizens for Constitutional Freedom, seized buildings following a peaceful rally in support of two ranchers facing prison for arson convictions. They say that they will leave when there's a plan in place to turn over federal lands to locals. The feds and local authorities have not yet moved to oust the group but are attempting to negotiate an end to the standoff. This is the latest flare-up of tensions over federal management of western lands. While ranchers and other residents object to what they believe are unfair rules, environmentalists say mining, logging, and ranching have all but destroyed public land and left a legacy of pollution for taxpayers to clean up. Number 5. Cliven Bundy In 2014, the elder Bundy, Nevada rancher Cliven, and his militia supporters stood down federal agents with the Bureau of Land Management outside Las Vegas. The initial conflict developed from a 20-year legal dispute between the United States Bureau of Land Management and the cattle rancher over unpaid grazing fees on federally owned land in southeastern Nevada. Bundy flat out refused to renew his permit for cattle grazing on BLM-administered lands near Bunkerville, Nevada as early as 1993 in protest against changes to grazing rules. Since since then, his cattle have grazed on public lands without a permit, and he has incurred grazing fees and penalties of up to $1 million. The BLM has stopped managing or patrolling the vast area of the state because of safety concerns stemming from Bundy's supporters. Some government officials worry this sets a bad precedent, but the BLM says its primary goal is to resolve the matter safely and according to the rule of law. Number 4. Waco as a lonely and bullied teen, Vernon Wayne Howell showed interest in only two things, music and the Bible. He became a Seventh-day Adventist but was cast out of the congregation for being a bad influence on other church members. A singer, songwriter, and guitarist, he came to LA's famed Sunset Strip to fulfill his dream of rock stardom. But his attempts at fame proved fruitless. Instead, he found a home in Waco, Texas with the Branch Davidians a religious sect that at its peak had approximately 1,400 members. Howell changed his name to David Koresh and began an affair with prophetess and leader Lois Roden, then in her mid-60s. After her passing, a power struggle for control of the Davidians ensued, and eventually Koresh won control of the group. Under his leadership, rumors of child abuse and illegal weapons were rampant. In response, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms raided the Davidians' Mount Carmel headquarters. After a 51-day siege and an epic gun battle between the feds and cult members, the compound burned to the ground with Koresh and 79 Davidians inside. Number 3. Ruby Ridge in the 1980s, Randy Weaver moved his family to northern Idaho to escape what he saw as a corrupt world on the brink of destruction. He was already on the radar of federal agents who began investigating the Army veteran for possible ties to white supremacists and anti-government groups. He was also eventually suspected of selling sawed-off shotguns to a government informant. He holed up on his land with his family for a decade before a team of U.S. Marshals scouting the forest to find suitable places to ambush and arrest Weaver, came across his friend Kevin Harris and Weaver's 14-year-old son Samuel. A gunfight broke out. Samuel and Deputy U.S. Marshal William Dagan were killed. The next day, an FBI sniper shot and wounded Randy Weaver as Weaver, Harris, and daughter Sarah ran back towards the house. The sniper fired a second bullet which passed through Vicki Weaver's head and wounded Harris in the chest. Remaining family members surrendered on August 31, 1992. Number 2. Montana Freeman A Christian militia group, the Montana Freeman, 
declared themselves exempt from the authority of the federal government. They believed in individual sovereignty and created their own government, currency, common law court, and banking system in Justice Township, Montana. However, they also committed a string of financial crimes. They used of counterfeit checks and even tried to buy $1.4 million of body armor and firearms on the U.S. District Court's account. When the Freeman's property was foreclosed upon in 1994, they refused to leave. In 1996, when the FBI stepped in and arrested two of the group's members, an armed standoff occurred, which ended up lasting 81 days. Eventually, the siege ended without violence. Leader Leroy Schweitzer was convicted of conspiracy, bank fraud, mail fraud, wire fraud, false claims to the IRS, interstate transportation of stolen property, threats against public officials, armed robbery of a television news crew, and firearms violations. He received a 22-year sentence for 25 convictions and died in prison in 2011. Number 1. Wounded Knee In 1971, members of the American Indian Movement, or AIM, marched in Washington and seized the national headquarters for the Bureau of Indian Affairs with a 20-point list of demands of the federal government. They sought to raise awareness and address issues affecting Native Americans, including poverty, housing, police harassment, and treaty issues. Two years later, 300 AIM activists took over the town of Wounded Knee, South Dakota, and made several demands to the U.S. government. The FBI, U.S. Marshals, and National Guard cordoned off the area, and a tense 71-day siege began. Heavy gunfire was exchanged during the standoff. To break the siege, the feds cut electricity and water to the town and attempted to prevent food and ammunition from being passed to the occupiers. The conflict was ended by tribal elders when two of the group's members were killed, and a U.S. Marshal was also shot and paralyzed. Thank you for watching Interesting Top 7s. If you enjoyed this video, Make sure to click the like button below and subscribe for new videos every week.